Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Tavis Leaf Glover, and today we're going to be covering some photos by Mert and Marcus. It's two guys that work together to create some nice fashion photos for us. They're not like Annie Leibovitz. They have the same quality as Annie Leibovitz, but they have a unique style that's their own. And they use dynamic symmetry, and I've got several photos that show different grids, and we'll cover those right now. So here we see a really nice photo, but you can tell it's unique, and she's posing in a unique way. So what makes the photographer have the model pose in this way and I believe it's dynamic symmetry and trying to fit into the grid and this isn't necessarily how to lock in everything into the grid it's more of how to look at things differently not like the rule of thirds but to capture more diagonals think outside of the box and pose your model in unique ways like this so we want to focus on creating more diagonals but this is the 5 4th MAD rectangle it's a 5 4th grid with a ratio of 1.25 and it has four smaller 5 5 fourth grids inside of the mother rectangle here. That's where these lines are generating from. So if you just divide it from the center lines, you'll find the four smaller grids inside, okay? One, two, three, and four. So let's look how they're locking the model into the grid. So right here, her arm and shoulder are locking into that diagonal there. That's the sinister diagonal. And you can also parallel the grid. If you can't lock in specifically, just try and parallel it. You got this vertical locking in here to that cloth. And if you follow this major sinister diagonal down, we see her arms locking in there. And then it's going down this center vertical line right here. Her legs locking into that vertical. And you see other various areas locking in, but what we want to pay attention to is these major diagonals, how they're aligning to those major diagonals, how they're paralleling the grid, like this elbows locking into this Baroque diagonal, and then also how they're distributing the balance from left to right. So if we have that vertical center line there, how are they distributing the weight from left to right? And we're taking into consideration the, the model's gaze, which is kind of going this way. So they've got part of her body on this right side and then part of her body on this left side. And then we have to consider all this color as adding interest to the image, which adds visual weight to this side. So when we look at it, most of her body is on the the right side and then to balance that we have her head but we also have all of this interest created from the color so that's a nice balance there so let's look at this next image we've got way more negative space she's almost on the complete opposite side of this baroque diagonal here and they're positioning her all on that right side and then maybe they're perhaps creating a magazine ad and adding a logo in this area which will help the balance and then also her gazing direction going from right to left helps the balance as well but we can see how she's locking in right here locking in on that vertical center line if you look at her shoulder here it's locking in there and then her hand is locking in on that horizontal and then if we look at her leg it's paralleling this baroque diagonal and again when you're posing models and you're working with organic objects and models like this you're not going to get it perfectly mathematical if you get it close enough it's going to serve the same purpose so don't worry about getting it mathematically correct and locking it in perfectly just try and create more diagonals and parallel if you can and lock in if you can and go from there okay now let's look at some images with the four third grid on there so this is a really cool image Image. got nice textures and colors and depth in there and when we turn the four third grid on we can see that she's locking into that Baroque diagonal here her leg right there her shoulder here is on that vertical center line and she's leaning on her arm here which is creating a diagonal and it's almost paralleling on this right side but then it's paralleling right here this sinister reciprocal diagonal so that's nice. Another diagonal here, paralleling. So with those two diagonals paralleling, we're getting a rhythm, a hidden rhythm that's called gamut. They're locking in this pillow right here to that diagonal. Let me turn the grid off here. You can see it right there. And then also, if you look at the weight distribution, if you take that vertical center line, we see her leg is locking in on that vertical center line on the left side, but also her weight's being distributed from the left and then to the right side. And then she's looking straight at us. So there's no weight either way on the gazing direction is going straight at us. So that's a nice image. It's another good one out on the street somewhere black and white but if we turn the grid on we can see that he's paralleling the diagonal in this concrete here to the sinister diagonal also her hand is going in this direction here okay if we draw the edge of that hand paralleling the sinister diagonal this one's pretty much going straight up and down her face is to the left of that vertical center line so we can see how he's distributing the weight and the gazing direction is going this way okay and then we have this negative space over here where they can put maybe some logos or some advertisement or some details like they have down here they have some details but could add some 
some more information here to help the balance. Face, chin's locking in really nice here on that horizontal, and then right up here. So, really cool. Not many diagonals. This shoulder and arm are locking into this diagonal here, okay, if you follow it up here. But for not having that many diagonals, he's doing a good job of trying to parallel. And then this is reduced in contrast here, so you can't really see that diagonal of that arm. So it's not adding much to the image, being kind of lost in there, which is fine. If they were doing an ad for these shoes that she's holding, if we look closer, she's holding shoes right here, and then there's a shoe here. So if we wanted the ad to be more obvious, and it's gonna be an ad for shoes, we would have better figure grind relationship on these shoes. So instead of it going behind her arm here, we would have it more like maybe over here, and then show the actual design of the shoe. And that would be better figure grind relationship and a clearer visual story than what they have here. All right, so that's the fourth third grid. Now let's go to the 1.5, and we've got one image, and we can see how she's locking in on this vertical. So if we take the intersection point of the reciprocal diagonal and the major diagonal here, the major diagonal right here, this is the sinister diagonal, and this is the reciprocal diagonal intersecting at 90 degrees right here. That's called the polar point. If we take this polar point right here, we can actually get smaller 1.5 rectangles just by dividing this. So this is a 1.5, this is a 1.5, this is a 1.5 and then we've got this one here where this diagonal comes down and hits the edge there draw a line across and that's a 1.5 as well so that's the significance of the polar point it divides it equally and it kind of like spirals around like the rectangle of the whirling squares so it's pretty interesting so if you're wanting to learn more about composition and dynamic symmetry be sure to check out the links below those will head you to my site where i have grids videos books, tons of things for artists to help them surpass their plateau and reach the master level. All right, so let's look at some horizontal images. And this one, we have the 5 fourth grid. You can see the shoulders locking in here on that diagonal. Okay, and then this other shoulder and arm are posed in a way to reflect that Baroque diagonal. Her chin's locking into the Baroque diagonal there. If we take her face and draw a line where her face is, it's paralleling this line right here. And then her bottom of her hair and the neckline are locking into this horizontal. So it all's locking in, playing a part, and he's using dynamic symmetry to inspire the poses and create a more dynamic image. So once you have all that, if we take away all this cool smoke and the colors, and we just look at it for what it is, she's positioned in a nice area, and she's got plenty of breathing room. This is her face, and she's looking this way. If we want to create a well-balanced image, we have to pay attention to this gazing direction and create a little bit more negative space to where they're looking and that helps the balance of it so he's done a nice job there now let's look at this 1.5 we've got a couple in here so this is definitely an obvious locking in of that baroque diagonal and then also if you look at her arm it's locking into that reciprocal diagonal right here not locking in but paralleling locking in here onto that this legs locking in right here so you can definitely tell it's a very great example of using dynamic symmetry and posing the model to create this geometry within the frame so let's take this away and take this away and that's what we get very very nice image now if we wanted to let's see see her gazing direction it's going this way we don't have much negative space if he wanted to he could aim it up this way and we get a little bit more negative space plus it it'll add interest to this side here but let's see what happens when we flip this because when you're creating contrast and interest on the right side here because of the magnetic momentum is what I call it that's in the law of symmetry gestalt psychology video collection that I've made but in the law of symmetry it covers that so you can see how it changes the movement we've got really nice movement and this is exactly a great example of the magnetic momentum this area has a lot of contrast and interest and we're putting it in close proximity to this sinister diagonal so we get this up and down movement okay this is a really nice way to create movement in your image now we didn't have that in the first one it's a really great image but our eyes are kind of like being stuck on this right side because of all the contrast and the interest but when it's flipped and our interest is going here leaning down here our eyes wander around but we're always led back to here and since we read from left to right we're always getting that movement going around so it's really nice to do that something to pay attention to here's another nice image put the grid on there not many diagonals but we can see how they're paying attention to the diagonal of her face we draw a line on her face here 
paralleling this grid and it's actually locking into this MAD grid right here. Same with her chin and then her hairline. And if we divide it from left to right with that vertical center line, we've got some visual weight on this side. Her gazing direction is going to the right and we've got negative space here to help with that. But then also we've got contrast here where her hair is so they're generating interest here which helps balance the image from left to right. This is another nice image. It's got a lot of dark areas so we can't really tell how strong these diagonals are but when we look closer we've got this arm paralleling the diagonal there. This hand is locking in here. This leg is creating a diagonal. If we draw a line there on the edge of the leg you can see it's paralleling this sinister diagonal. Okay this arm here is locking in. Her face is locking in there. Then her head right here. And who knows if they sh just shot this with a standard format of the camera, maybe a 1.5, or if he's got a large format camera. That's an 8x10 shooting film. Who knows? Whatever you're using, if you want, you can crop down to these grids and apply the geometry a little bit better if you want to do it that way. I always recommend composing the image in camera so you don't have to crop and waste pixels and all that. So you have the highest resolution as possible. But you can always use these grids to help crop your image and refine the geometry within the frame if you need to. All right, so that's it for this one. I really appreciate all the support and you guys keep the content flowing. Please leave a comment below if you like any certain artists that are really remarkable and you'd like me to analyze them and see how they create their images. But until next time, take care.